All right. Okay. I'm going to start now. So, uh, okay. Um, hello, everyone. Um, thanks uh, very much for uh, attending this uh, presentation. So my name is Gobe Hobana. I work for the Open Geospatial Consortium, also known as the OGC. And I'm going to speak to you about the 2021 joint OGC OSGO ASF code sprint. So that's Open Geospatial Consortium, Open Source Geospatial Foundation, and Apache Software Foundation joint code sprint. The presentation um, has been prepared in conjunction with colleagues Angelos Tosos from, uh, from OSGO and Tom Kralidis also from OSGO and Martin Desro de Serve from, um, from the geospatial um, part of Apache Software Foundation. All right. So first of all, the joint OGC OSGO ASF code sprint was held in February. Uh, so it was held from February 17th to the 19th. We held it as a virtual event, as you can imagine, because of the uh, pandemic. And we organized the event, uh, the code sprint, specifically to help accelerate the support of open geospatial standards within the uh, developer community. So the idea was to bring in uh, developers from across the um, foundations and the consortium and to provide a, a platform, an environment um, in which those developers can uh, advance the implementation of um, open geospatial standards, as well as to provide feedback to the working groups that develop open geospatial uh, standards. And part of the motivation um, for holding this event was the growing uptake of location uh, handling and location information across the global developer community. So we're seeing quite a lot of software, whether uh, commercial or open source or proprietary. Uh, we're seeing quite a variety of software implementing support for location. So through the development of open geospatial standards, what we want to do, what we want to do is to facilitate the reusability and interoperability across off location information across all of those uh, software products. The code sprint uh, was sponsored by um, Ordnance Survey as gold sponsor uh, and GeoCat as silver level sponsor. And OSGO uh, um, is, is Martin, sorry, is uh, Angelos or Tom here? Tom, are you online? Okay, all right. Hi, hello, Gabe. Hello, Han. Uh, hi, Martin. Uh, great. Um, so, um, if I speak to the slide, if, if not, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll speak to it. All right, okay. So um, the from OSGO's side, there are quite a number of uh, sponsors helping um, OSGO to, you know, with with um, with hosting and running the uh, code sprint. So it was really great to see all of the uh, support from across the uh, across the community. Um, and from the Apache side, Martin, do you want to say a few words regarding uh, Apache Software Foundation? Uh, I think that the slide just said everything, so I cannot add much more to that. Uh, on the Apache side, we were, there, there was the general project uh, Apache SIS, and I think there is another project that I may forgot. Uh, Jenna as well. Yes, Jenna. Uh, so I think there were maybe two or three projects. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's right. Uh, th thanks, Martin. And uh, one of the key things about the um, code sprint, about the, the Apache Software Foundation's um, 
uh, participation in this code sprint as well is that uh, quite a number of participants in in the geospatial part of the Apache Software Foundation um, took part in the organization of the code sprint. Um, uh, George Percival, um, who's actively involved in the geospatial track, he also helped to uh, organize the code sprint. So, uh, so there was, you know, significant um, collaboration between OGC, OSGO, and the Apache Software uh, Foundation. But not only, um, but not only was it the geospatial track from the Apache Software Foundation that was involved in this activity, but there were also participants from other parts of the Apache Software Foundation. Um, now, I'd like to just, first of all, uh, explain just, um, the, is my, is, um, is Tom Gobi, can, Gobi, can you hear oh, me, Gobi? Great. Yeah, yeah, I can oh. hear you, Tom. Yeah. Okay, you, great. Uh, yeah, awesome. Yeah. 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 Uh, sorry, I had some technical difficulties, but uh, just in time. Sorry. So, yeah. uh yeah, uh, so an overview from the uh, from the OSGO perspective. Um, OSGO is a, a stands for the Open Source Geospatial Foundation. It was founded in 2000 and, uh, 2006, and it's uh, it, it's it's a place where there's a, a community of of focused on geospatial open source software. We pro provide financial, organizational, and uh, le legal support. Uh, we have a number of uh, yearly yearly events. Uh, so we have our, our global conference, which usually happens every fall. Uh, then we have a number of uh, Traditionally, we have a, a num we've had a number of code sprints, which are uh, which are all across the uh, uh, all across the planet. Uh, last year's was virtual for for obvious reasons, but uh, we uh, we continue to have them just the same. So um, we promote promote the global adoption of open source geospatial technology, and we um, we look to forge partnerships with uh, with uh, like minded organizations with similar goals to create synergies. So, for example, we have a memorandum of understanding with uh, with the OGC. Um, we also have a, a liaison with uh, with ISO and a number of other organizations. So, um, trying to align uh, you know open source software with example with for example things that are going on in open standards or other things that are going on at uh, in other organizations. We have a, a uh, liaison with with the uh, United Nations as well. So the organization is purely volunteer driven. There's a board of directors. There's a, a, a from all over the planet uh, who meet monthly. There's a number of different. Uh, there's a number of members, and we promote open source geospatial software. So we have, um, you know, official projects. We have community projects. We have an incubation uh, workflow or a, a, a program that we work through. And uh, we really, our, our goal is to, uh, you know, foster the use and adoption of open source geospatial software. Um, next slide. So as far as, uh, as far as the sprint is concerned, um, you know, we were more than excited to, uh, you, you know, to, to combine efforts with OGC and uh, and Apache to to put forth uh, to put forth this event. So we had a number of different projects that were um, that were involved in this sprint. We do have 21 uh, official projects that have gone through the incub our incubation community and their committee and their official OG, uh, OSGO projects, if you will. We have a number of community projects as well. So a number of different projects from uh, from our community across. A, number of different programming languages and, and functionality were able to participate uh, in the sprint and interact with you know Apache and and, um, and OGC thanks okay thanks Tom okay uh, so I'll now uh, introduce the OGC um, so the OGC is a global consortium representing over 500 industry government research and academic member organizations um, we offer a, 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 a pretty much a platform uh, and uh, an environment where organizations can come together and discuss uh, and tackle interoperability issues uh, and to also identify solutions to those uh, issues. So we're seen as a hub for thought leadership and innovation uh, for all things related to location, um, you know, from location data 
uh, to you know right through to the service to the services and APIs and and other aspects of location um, information handling. Um, so we have a consensus uh, based process uh, which our members uh, engage in and participate in to uh, you know to develop those uh, standards um, that uh, facilitate uh, geospatial interoperability. Um, so our members join the OGC for a variety of reasons, uh, and some of those reasons are shown on the slide. You know, for business development, uh, to grow their brands uh, globally, uh, to identify opportunities for innovation funding, uh, to help develop their own operational policies, to build international uh, partnerships, um, and for several uh, other reasons. Um, we hold quarterly meetings uh, and prior to the pandemic um, you know those meetings were face to face they're currently virtual um, but as soon as it's safe to uh, to meet in person again uh, we're expecting we'll resume our face-to-face uh, -face meetings and in in those in those meetings OGC members um, develop and discuss and um, specify uh, standards. Um, and if you're wondering what an OGC standard is, it's a, a document established through consensus and approved by the OGC membership um, that provides rules and guidelines aimed at optimizing the degree of interoperability within a given context. We take into consideration uh, a whole variety of uh, issues and requirements from the market, uh, from uh, from our members, from from outside of the membership. Also, we also look at technology trends to inform uh, the specification of those standards. What you can see on this slide is a photo taken at a, an OGC member meeting uh, back in 2018. Um, so um, that just gives you an, a, an idea of the, you know, the, of the level of participation at um, at OGC member meetings. Of course. Since the start of the pandemic, uh, the meetings have been virtual, so we've seen a significant increase as well in participation. Um, so that's, um, that's something to keep in mind. So, um, so next we'll talk about sprint goals, what each of the host organizations, uh, you know, sought to achieve. And um, Martin, do you want to uh, speak to some of the goals from? In relation to the Apache Software Foundation, uh, uh, yes, sorry. Uh, some well, the China project, the uh, one of their goal was about uh, GeoSpark QL support, uh, as we see on the on the slide. If I am remembering right, there was also. Uh, an effort to improve interoperability with a project outside SIS and OSGO. So in the case of the Joe API effort in particular, it was an effort with the, uh, the NetCDF library from UCAR, University Corporation for Atmospheric Research. So during this uh, code sprint, there were an effort to develop wrapper that allow to use the UCAR library uh, using the GeoAPI interface, it allowed to use, uh, for this test bed, we have used two libraries, UCAR and SCDF, and the goal was to be able to do some basic operation like coordinate transformation uh, on any of those two libraries with uh, no code change or almost no code change on implementer side. Okay, all right, thanks Martin. And then, uh, Tom, do you want to take this one? Sure, great. Um, fr from from the OSGO side, uh, we specifically uh, focused on um, releasing new versions of software. We did a number, there's been a number of projects that have been um, implementing the uh, some of the emerging standards that are coming uh, from OGC with regards to uh, APIs. So a lot of the OSGO tooling, uh, whether it's servers, clients, um, parsers, or, or serializers, 
are starting to implement uh, implement these standards, and these standards are um, uh, a clean break from the first generation of API standards or web service standards from OGC, um, and, uh, and and our projects are taking on you know those those new standards and trying to fit them into the way things have uh, always worked. So we have a number of different projects that were that were participating to to basically ramp up our tooling um and open issues against uh, implementing those standards testing against testing for compliance and obviously developing uh, developing new features so we saw a number of uh, a number of projects that uh, that that were involved in this sprint that wanted to interact with you know the OG, ogc stuff and the apache stuff as well as the emerging ogc standards for uh, for 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 apis and we'll talk a little bit about uh, a little bit about that uh, later on in this presentation. Thanks. Okay, Th thanks, Tom. So in, in terms of uh, sprint goals for OGC working groups, um, at a high level, basically the working groups sought to develop prototype implementations of OGC standards. And you know, one of the key reasons for doing that is that um, by implementing the prototype, um, uh, you know the, the prototypes. It it then becomes possible to identify um, issues or areas where the uh, draft standards can be um, can be revised and and improved. Um, so not only were the working groups um, developing the prototypes, but they were also testing those um, you know those prototype implementations to help uh, uncover uh, areas where the um, you know whether spe draft specifications could be uh, could be refined and uh, and improved. And another key thing about um, you know the the, the code sprint was that um, the editors of the draft specifications took part, um, and that made it possible for developers participating in the code sprint to provide feedback to the editors. Um, as they were actually implementing, so it was kind of like a, a near real time um, uh, loop uh, between implementation um, and also, you know, informing the uh, the editing of the draft specifications. Um, so the so another uh, goal was, you know, to provide that uh, that feedback um, and not just feedback about. Uh, I'll say not just feedback about editorial things, but also feedback about what worked and what did not work. Um, so those were the you know goals uh, of the OGC uh, working groups that took part in the code sprint. And over a period of three days, uh, we applied what we refer to as a sprint cycle. So we uh, you know we had presentations and discussions um, on a go to a meeting web conference line um, and for, after those discussions the participants then um, implemented the specifications uh, and at various points over the three day period um, the participants reconvened back in the web conferencing um, um, room in order to discuss each So ideas um, that they'd uh, encountered or come up with, um, and then they'd go back to implementing again. Um, and throughout the three days, um, there was a lot of discussion uh, taking place on a GitHub channel uh, set up for the code sprint. Um, and then at various points over the three days, um, the participants also um, did demonstrations. So they they, you know, they they showed us what they implemented or what they were implementing, and also showed us any, you know, um, issues that they, they that they were encountering. So, so we went through this cycle uh, a number of times over the three days, and uh, you know, and it it worked extremely well in feeding, um, um, you know, I'll say knowledge and lessons um, to the editors as well as. Uh, back to the uh, participants uh, again. So, um, what did we actually um, build um, at a high level? This is 
uh, the architecture that was uh, implemented in the code sprint. So we had several projects uh, participating, several software products uh, deployed, uh, and uh, I'll, I'll start. Um, I'll start from you know from the bottom going uh, up. Um, so in terms of server side uh, software, we had GeoServer. Uh, GeoServer is an open source uh, product that makes it possible to uh, publish um, geospatial uh, data, and it supports a number of OGC standards. Um, we also had KubeServe by a company called KubeWorks. Um, so KubeServe is a proprietary product uh, that also implements a number of OGC stand standards, and they um, uh, implemented a number of processing, uh, geospatial processing capabilities, um, but also um, um, data publishing uh, capabilities um, as well. So there's also QGIS, um, or, well, specifically QGIS server, uh, which is an open source uh, product uh, from OSGO. Uh, it supports a number of uh, OGC standards, uh, including OGC API features. Um, we also have PyG API, um, also an open source product. Um, and PyG API implements uh, multiple OGC API um, uh, standards, both approved and drafts, uh, draft standards. Uh, Tom Kralidis uh, is uh, the lead developer of, uh, of PyG API. Uh, we also had PyCSW, um, another open source product um, from, uh, from OSGO, um, which implements um, primarily the uh, catalog services standards um, and um, making it possible to, pub uh, to publish metadata, geospatial metadata. Um, another uh, server-side product was uh, Echeri, uh, sorry, Echeri's Genosis Map Server. So that's a proprietary uh, product from a company called uh, Echeri. Um, and that product implements a number of um, OGC API standards as well, uh, including both uh, approved ones and, uh, and others currently in draft uh, form. Um, and then another open source product was Apache ActiveMQ, um, which uh, needs no introduction at this conference. Uh, and uh, there are also uh, other server-side uh, products uh, deployed, including Interactive Instruments, LD Proxy, which implements OGC API standards, including OGC API features and a number of draft specifications. Um, and uh, as Martin mentioned earlier on, um, uh, Apache Jenna uh, was also deployed, uh, and we also had Apache Kafka uh, de deployed in the um, uh, in the code sprint. So there's quite a wide variety of software products deployed to you know to, um, to help make this uh, code sprint uh, work. So um, software libraries we had Apache SIS. Uh, which implements the OGC Geo API uh, standard, um, and there's also the Geo API, uh, which was de uh, deployed. Yuka Unidata, uh, and Martin men mentioned this earlier on. Um, OSLib, an OSGO uh, pro uh, a software library. Uh, PG Routing, also uh, um, another open source product deployed. Uh, GDAL, uh, one of one of the most uh, popular um, geospatial libraries um, uh, from OSGO, that was also deployed. Um, and then for web APIs, um, quite a number of OGC API standards uh, were implemented by the software products that uh, you see listed on this slide. So it was OGC API features which provides a specification for how um, you, uh, it basically provides a series of requirements for the publishing of vector feature data through uh, web API uh, conforming to OGC API standards. So um, OGC API features, that's an approved OGC standard 
um, and several implement several products you see listed on the slide implemented that uh, uh, that standard. OGC API maps that's a draft um, OGC specification. There are a number of uh, software products that implemented it. What that specification does is that it um, it provides a series of requirements for how you publish um, rendered maps uh, or charts, um, how you um, enable the accessing of those uh, maps or charts um, through you know through a web API API interface. Um, then OGC API coverages. That's another draft uh, OGC API specification. That one provides a series of requirements uh, for how you enable a web API to publish coverage data. Uh, typical examples of coverage data include satellite imagery, uh, and some meteorological uh, data sets are also published as covered coverages. Another um, specification that was deployed, um, so that was implemented by products that were deployed in the uh, code sprint is OGC API processes. This is a newly approved OGC API standard, uh, which will soon be published uh, in its approved version. And what this standard uh, does is that it specifies a series of requirements for how you enable a web API to offer geospatial processes, uh, so any algorithm that can be implemented uh, through a web API, uh, it provides a series of requirements for how you wrap um, an OGC API interface around those uh, those algorithms. Um, and that is a newly approved OGC API standard, which will be published quite soon. Um, and then OGC API tiles, uh, that's a draft specification. Uh, which provides a series of requirements for how you enable web APIs to publish tiled resources. Tiled resources include, for instance, map tiles or tiled feature data, also known as vector tiles. Um, so that there are a number of software products that implemented that draft specification as well. And then the OGC API environmental data retrieval, uh, newly approved OGC standard. Um, that standard, uh, a number of implementations uh, of that standard were deployed in the code sprint. Uh, what that um, standard does, that it provides a series of requirements for how you publish environmental data resources. Um, and typical resources, for instance, include um, uh, trajectories um, indicating um, um, Paths for uh, for flights, or even pa paths of um, um, you know of of storms or hurricanes or um, or other types of uh, environmental uh, phenomena. Um, it can also be used for geoscientific or geological uh, data for publishing spatial temporal um, uh, data of all of all kinds. Um, then OGC API records um, draft specification uh, providing the requirements for how you publish metadata records through an OGC API. Uh, and then OGC API styles, uh, also a draft specification for how you publish symbology, uh, styles, and, and other portrayal uh, informa uh, information. Um, and many of the software products uh, deployed in the code sprint um, supported a whole variety of data uh, encodings. Uh, for instance, MapML, uh, a draft specification being developed across the community uh, with participation from OGC, W3C, uh, and other partners. Um, and then the styled layer descriptor and OGC standard uh, for how you describe symbology, styles, and uh, other portrayal information. Uh, GeoJSON LD, um, uh, a profile of JSON LD specifically for, uh, for representing uh, geospatial data. Uh, GeoJSON, uh, an IETF uh, standard. Um, and then GeoPackage, uh, an OGC standard for how you um, store different types of geospatial data, whether vector data, 
uh, tiled coverages or tiled maps, uh, or how you store such data in a, an SQLite database. So that's what the dual package standard uh, describes. And then finally, the client applications deployed uh, included QGIS, uh, an open source pro pro product from OSGO, Grass, uh, also an open source project from OSGO, uh, Miramon, uh, a proprietary pro uh, product from, um, from the Autonomous University of Barcelona, um, and then OpenSphere, uh, another open source um, product, um, and um, Echeris Genosis Cartographer, a proprietary product from, uh, from Echeri. Uh, we also had, uh, code generators involved in the, in the, uh, in the code sprint, including Pydentic, uh, as well as Open API tools generators. So that's, um, that's the architecture. And within, you know, three days, participants were able to deploy these and, uh, to, uh, to carry out, uh, quite a variety of, uh, of, of experiments, which I'll describe in a, in a minute. Um, if you're interested in finding out more about OGC API standards, um, the URL is shown on this slide. So ogcapi.ogc.org. So the participants deployed um, a variety of products and, um, and also explored um, what we refer to as technology integration experiments. So looking at how you uh, integrate the various products uh, into solutions. And some of the um, technology integration experiments that were either designed, discussed, or demonstrated uh, listed on this slide. So um, the teams from QGIS, Geocella, and Apache Jenna Fuseki, uh, um, they designed a pipeline for getting feature data out of QGIS into Geocella and then into Apache Jenna Fuseki. So it was great um seeing this um this workflow um uh, designed um and then there was there were also discussions on PyGeo api binding with uh with geonode uh and um and a number of demonstrations of technology integration experiments uh, one of which included the import of a discrete global grid system layer into open sphere uh, supported by PyGeo api um, integration of Geo API, Apache SIS, and the Yuka Net CDF library. Um, demonstration of um, Grass GIS integration with Kubeworks, uh, KubeSev uh, implementation of OGC API features. Um, demonstration of Geo Server integration of, map, uh, of a MapML leaflet uh, component. Uh, demonstration of QGIS integration with PyGeo API implementation of OGC API records, um, and demonstration of the Miramon uh, product and its integration with HRS Genosis Map Server and um, and KubeWorks uh, KubeServe, um, implementing a number of OGC API standards, um, and finally uh, demonstration of OWS lib connection to LD proxies, uh, OGC API records implementation uh, and navigation of resources. So um, the point, the key point is that these pro products and uh, projects and working groups as they were participating in the code sprint, you know, they were not working in isolation. They were actually collaborating with other products, other projects and working groups uh, that were in the code sprint. So there was a lot of, um, you know, joint work and collaboration throughout the three days. And it was really, really uh, encouraging to see. Now, just to give you an idea, you know, some further idea of, uh, of what was implemented, so of some of the results, I've got some, we've got some screenshots from the uh, various implementations. So this, um, this screenshot here um, is obviously of NetBeans, um, but basically it's the NetBeans ID was running Geo API, Apache SIS, and the Yuka NetCDF library. Um, so led by uh, by, by Martin, um, 
the activity relating to Apache SIS um, was able to, you know, the, the, uh, demonstrate how uh, interaction with all of uh, with these uh, with these libraries uh, could be achieved. So that was really uh, that was excellent uh, to see. Um, and then KubeWorks KubeServe. Um, so the dem the demonstration of uh, of KubeServe, the implementation and demonstration of KubeServe uh, uh, implemented OGC API processes, which provides a way to wrap geospatial algorithms or implementations of geospatial algorithms within a web API. And what you are looking at on the slide is a screenshot from a ship detection uh, uh, process, which took in RadarSat satellite imagery um, and processed the satellite imagery on the on the fly. So in in real time, processed the satellite imagery and uh, and identified ships. Um, so this was um, a demonstration of OGC API processes uh, using KubeServe. Um, so there was also a deployment of Geo Network, another open source product, and Geo Network implements OGC API records. Um, it implements a number of uh, other standards, including, for instance, um, ISO 19115 metadata records, as well as uh, DCAT and uh, schema.org and others. So there was a deployment of Geo Network. Um, and um, and and integration with uh, a number of other products and demonstration of uh, of the of your network support for OGC API records uh, as well as a number of other standards as well. And then GeoServer, there was a deployment of uh, GeoServer, um, and uh, GeoServer implements OGC API features, OGC API maps, and OGC API styles. And the developers of GeoServer used the code sprint as an opportunity to help progress support for these um, uh, OGC API standards. Um, they were also supported by a team from Natural Resources Canada um, that um, implemented a MapML um, plugin for GeoServer. And uh, you can see a screenshot uh, from a demonstration of MapML uh, on this slide as well. Cross GIS, so um, a team from OSGO uh, implemented um, the support for OGC API features inside Grass. So the uh, Grass GIS is uh, uh, it, it's a GIS um, uh, software solution that um, um, that was uh, you know that, that has been around for several years and um, and um, it, it supports quite a wide variety of uh, uh, of OGC standards and within this code sprint, uh, the team behind Cross uh, GIS implemented uh, support for OGC API uh, features. Um, a team from Hexagon um, um, deployed um, the uh, proprietary product uh, called Hexagon uh, Geoprocessing Suite. Um, they deployed and uh, and implemented uh, support for OGC API process within this code sprint. And what you can see is a screenshot um, of the hexagon geoprocessing um, uh, product. In fact, this, these are just uh, two of the views. There are several other uh, uh, views as, as well. So that product uh, supports OGC API processes, but it also supports se several other uh, OGC standards. LD proxy was deployed uh, as well, and you can see a screenshot uh, of LD pro uh, proxy. That's an open source uh, software product from Interactive Instruments. Supports a number of OGC API uh, standards. Uh, Miramon from the Autonomous University of Craft was also deployed, um, and OpenSphere um, that was uh, deployed and enabled to. Uh, ingest uh, data from uh, OGC API features from PyGeo API instances in order to create discrete global grid systems on 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 a sphere uh, representation. 
Uh, PyGeo API um, was uh, deployed, as mentioned earlier on, with various um, teams enabling it to support various uh, demonstrate, demonstrators. And you can see some of the standards that PyGeo API supports. So in conclusion, the sprint achieved its goal of accelerating the support of open uh, geospatial standards within the developer community, and uh, it helped facilitate the development and, and testing of prototype implementations of various OGC standards. Um, and participants were able to provide feedback to the editors and feedback to other uh, participants. So it, it was uh, an excellent environment. Uh, it provided a collaborative environment for OSG, OSF developers, and also um, OGC uh, working groups. So that was uh, very great to see. Um, as we look towards the future, we are planning to hold another joint code sprint in 2022. We haven't set a date yet, but all the organizations um, that participated in, in this uh, code sprint uh, you know, are, um, are supportive of a follow-on event in 2022. Uh, we'd like to grow the community, you know, have more working groups, more projects participating. Um, and current thinking is that it will be a virtual event, but um, you know we'll see we'll see what the uh, trouble situation is uh, next year. It, it could even end up being a hybrid event. There's a, a, a an OGC API code sprint taking place in October uh, this month. Uh, so next month, next month on the from the 26th to the 28th, it will be looking at OGC APIs for routes um, and discrete global grid systems as well as OGC API common. Uh, please register. Uh, you can see the URL on, on this slide. Uh, it's open to any, anyone from the general public. Uh, anyone is welcome to participate in it. If you'd like to get in touch with us, um, feel free to send us an email. Uh, my email address is on the slide, is on the slide. Angelos, uh, Tosus, uh, his, uh, um, email address is on there, and Tom Kralidis' ad email address is also on there, as well as Martin's as well. Feel free to send us an email, and we're happy to get in touch. And that's it. Are there any questions? Any questions? Okay, um, here are no questions. Uh, thank you so much uh, for this opportunity to speak to you. I think uh, it's been, uh, you know, an excellent opportunity. The Apache Con Conference um, has, uh, you know, it's, it's provided a, um, an excellent platform for sharing uh, some of these experiences. Uh, we welcome you to a future uh, code sprint. Uh, feel free to get in contact, uh, and uh, yeah, and, that, and that's it. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you very much, Kobe. Thank you. And Tom. Thanks, all. Thank you.